Hello there, this is Dr. Mintz. This is a patient who presented to radiology for a CT of the abdomen and pelvis with a history of abdominal pain, nausea, and vomiting. I'll scroll through these axial images, give you a chance to get an overall view of what exactly is happening here. Maybe something catches your eyes. All right, and then we will go back up. Okay, so you probably noticed that there is some dilated bowel. You'll have to determine if that's large or small bowel and where in the large and small or small bowel it is actually located. But first let's go through our routine and make sure we examine all structures in the abdomen and that includes the liver, spleen, and pancreas. So we go through the liver, look through every image, spleen, all the way through the spleen, and the pancreas. Here you can see the pancreas being closely followed in along its posterior aspect by the splenic vein, and the splenic vein of course goes to the splenic hilum, always. And that splenic vein merges with the superior mesenteric vein, which is right here, and that has many contributories coming from the mesentery. So it can, they all converge, or many of them converge on this superior mesenteric vein, which joins the splenic vein to form the portal vein, which then empties into the liver. So that takes care of the liver, spleen, and pancreas. The gallbladder looks fine. The adrenal glands look good. They're like kind of upside down Y or upside down V configurations with thin limbs. All right, so they have a limb, they have a medial and lateral limb. Here's the lateral limb. Here's a medial limb and they look nice and thin in the body. Uh, looks thin as well, so this is a normal appearing adrenal gland on both sides. So the gallbladder and the adrenal glands appear unremarkable. No renal abnormalities. There's a symmetric pattern of enhancement. The nephrogram is symmetric, in other words, on both the left and right sides. And the abdominal aorta is normal in caliber and the lung bases are clear. And we would put this on lung windows to get a better assessment of the lung windows. Okay, so what do we have then? We have abnormally dilated bowel in the left lower quadrant, uh, extending a little bit across the lower abdomen to the right. So it's dilated bowel question is, is it large or small bowel? Well, we can look and see if we can identify a large bowel. And here's where we expect to see the ileocecal valve. And, and it is here. We don't see it quite w as well as I'd like to, but it's not distended. Because this is actually a small bowel obstruction, and bowel distal to a small bowel obstruction tends to acquire an abnormally narrow caliber. It collapses, in other words. So the reaction of bowel when there's a bowel obstruction is to increase peristalsis throughout the bowel in order to try to propel material through the obstruction and hopefully overcome the obstruction and possibly even resolve it depending on the etiology of the obstruction. But anyway, the right colon is collapsed. You don't see any air or stool in it, which is exactly what you would expect to see if there's a small bowel obstruction. And this looks very much like small bowel. And we have the confirmation of reduced caliber, very reduced caliber of the colon. So this is a small bowel obstruction. I can tell you that right now. So now we have to follow this right colon. And we follow it up. It's small. It's right here. This is small bowel with oral contrast opacification from oral contrast 
and uh, it's in the right abdomen. Ordinarily, you'd expect the proximal bowel to be more in the left upper abdomen, but in this case, it looks like this bowel obstruction maybe has flipped over from the right side to the left side and displaced what would ordinarily be small bowel loops on the left side and allowed them to cross over. But uh, that's probably what has happened here. That's um, my theory. So here you have the right colon, reduced caliber, collapsed. Here you have the hepatic flexure. It's the same size or smaller than these loops of small bowel that we see in the upper abdomen. Okay, so that's that. And then here, this looks like this is the transverse colon, also collapsed, markedly reduced caliber. We come over around here to the splenic flexure, and you can hardly even identify it as separate from the spleen because it's of such reduced caliber. It's very much collapsed that it's when it's where it's right against the spleen. This is actually spleen, and this is part of that collapsed colon. Maybe you can appreciate it if I scroll down and up through that area, and you can see that there is collapsed colon here, and we follow that down more inferiorly, and here it might be a little difficult. No, here is the distal left colon, and we have to try to find the sigmoid colon. Well, this, this collapsed colon here looks like it's coursing over this way, and then it's very hard to follow at that point, but I'm confident up to that point. But now if we begin from below, we look here, and here is rectum, and here is some sigmoid colon. So, okay, so here we can see sigmoid colon with stool in it, and here you have a viscous, which is air-filled, and that looks like that is the proximal sigmoid colon, so it joins that very small caliber left colon somewhere in this area. Here's the small caliber left colon, and there we go, and it connects right there. Okay, so we have a small bowel obstruction. Where is it? Uh, well, if we look for the ileocecal valve, we can see, as we described a moment ago, Here's the right colon. Here's the ileocecal valve coming into the right colon. And you can kind of see it has this kind of channeled look, long channel there. Uh, and here's some thickening here in this region that looks like it's part of the ileocecal valve as well. And as we follow that proximally, we certainly do come right into the jejunum, or actually the ilium, the distal small bowel, which has this pattern of air bubbles in its lumen, which is called small bowel stool. And it looks like the stool, kind of like the stool here that we see in colon. And we, or we don't ordinarily have anything stool-like in the small bowel, but we have this term small bowel stool sign, a small bowel stool sign, to uh, indicate that this is an abnormality and it has usually significance indicating that there is a small bowel obstruction and the backup of material in the small bowel allows it to get sufficiently uh, deprived of fluid from the fluid absorption in the small bowel that you acquire this small bowel stool sign. Remember, normally we see stool like this, as we have it here, in this case, in the sigmoid colon. And very often we'll have it throughout the colon. But in this case, the colon has cleared because in a case of a small bowel obstruction, the bowel overall takes on this active peristalsis to try to clear the obstruction wherever it might be. And so everything past the obstruction, in this case, the colon, right colon, transverse colon, left colon, all are pretty much deprived of any content because of the increased peristalsis, which has taken place as a result of the small bowel obstruction. So this small bowel obstruction seems to be 
um, at about the level of the terminal uh, small bowel because I can see this is clearly a part of the distal ileum, the distal small bowel, just proximal to the ileocecal valve. This is ileocecal valve, and immediately we see a reduced caliber colon, so that tells me that this is the level of the obstruction, and it's either in the very distal small bowel, right proximally to the ileocecal valve, or it actually is some lesion such as a carcinoma involving the ileocecal valve, and that's possible, although I don't see anything inordinately thickened here to indicate that there is really a mass in the ileocecal valve region. Uh, when the bowel gets dilated like this, it can kind of twist around and flop, and you can kind of think of water balloons or, or, or the balloons that clowns make these shapes out of, and when they start getting distended and twisted amongst one another, they can kind of flip from one side to, of the abdomen to the other, and so I think that something of that nature has happened and caused this small bowel to be distributed more in the left abdomen, where, whereas ordinarily we'd expect the, the jejunum, the more proximal small bowel, to be in the left upper abdomen and mid-abdomen and the ileum to be more in the right lower quadrant. Okay, so this is a fairly dramatic, uh, somewhat complicated case of small bowel obstruction that appears to involve the terminal ileum right at the ileocecal valve level, causing clearance of the content of the colon almost completely with the exception of the sigmoid where we do see a small amount of residual stool. And by the way, we do have a small amount of free fluid here and that's usually a, a common accompaniment to small bowel obstruction, and I think it just has to do with the increased pressure of the obstructed bowel and the seepage of fluid from the lumen uh, to the wall and uh, to the surrounding tissue. So having a small amount of free fluid here in the lower pelvis between the urinary bladder and the rectum is not uncommon at all in a patient with small bowel obstruction. And that's it for now.